Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you had a great week again and that you had some time to learn and to spend time outside and doing some other cool stuff. Um, I hope that we can have some good time together worshiping. And uh, before we begin doing that, how about we open with a word of prayer? If you could bow your heads, fold your hands, close your eyes and listen, that would be fantastic. Here we go. Dear God, you have blessed us with a beautiful world, lakes, grassy fields, and a sky filled with beauty, stars, sun, moon, and clouds. Thank you for your wonderful gifts and for bringing us together to learn more about you. Thank you for our friends. We're joined together to show that we are one family. We all belong to your family. Be with us now as we worship you and learn more about you and your son, Jesus. Amen. take a look for a moment at the story symbol that if we had our regular Sunday school papers this symbol would be in the paper. I want you to think about what these this picture might represent. Whose feet could these be? Hmm. And what are they doing hanging over a cloud? Could this be an optical illusion? Sometimes we can see lots of things in clouds if we look hard enough. Kids, we'll find out more about the story symbol soon. So start thinking and keep trying to guess maybe what the story might be about today. All right, kids, we're gonna find out more about the story symbol a little bit later, especially during the story. But for now, we're gonna move on and do some singing. So I brought some of my friends again today to help me out and now uh, you can follow along or if you'd like to just listen that's up to you but uh, we'll hope to have some fun singing. Okay everybody we're going to sing Jesus Loves Bubbling Over and we learned it last week so I'm just going to recap how we did it last week. It was Jesus's love is bubbling over okay. and then I don't know if you remember the sound effects, but every when we take out Jesus, we go, woo. And then when we say take out love, we go, ah. <laughs> and then for bubbling, we go, shh. And then over is wee, wee. All right, ready to try it? We'll sing it with all the words the first time, and then we'll every time around, we take out one word. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Jesus' love is bubbling over. Jesus' love is bubbling over. Jesus' love is bubbling over. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ooh, love is bubbling over. Ooh, love is bubbling over. Ooh, love is bubbling over. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, <laughs> Bubbling over, <laughs> bubbling over, <laughs> bubbling over, yeah, 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 <laughs> over, <laughs> over, <laughs> over, yeah, 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 sang during the VBS this summer uh, so we have never sung it before and it's new um, but it looks like VBS won't be happening this year unfortunately so I figured since I've already learned it I might as well take the time to teach it to you and if we do end up doing VBS in the future then at least you got a little head start right so this is a song that um, is a shortened version of a song that's actually written by an artist named Jeremy Camp. And the title of the song is Saying Power, um, which is the same title as the BBS song. It's just the chorus and one verse. 
So if you want to YouTube the song, you can write Same Power by Jeremy Camp. It'll be a little bit different, but that's the same idea. So this song, we're just going to learn the chorus today. So I'm going to show you how the actions go with the words, and these guys are going to learn it with me, because I don't think they've learned it yet. <laughs> oh, a little bit. Okay, so the first line goes, the same power, and then you're going to put your hand up and go, be powerful. So the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, and then you're going to put your hand up, and then you go the other way, you go, the same power that commands the dead to raise, and then you're going to kind of point down, so lives in us, lives in us. And then we're going to do it again with different words, same action. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm the raging sea, lives in us, lives in us. And then you do it one more time. Lives in us, lives in us. The same power that rose Jesus from the graves. The same power that commands the dead to raise lives in us. Lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm the raging sea lives in us. Lives in us, lives in us, lives in us. You think we can do it one more time? Yes. I think so. Ready? Same beginning. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. Okay. Three, two, one. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to raise lives in us lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm the raging sea lives in us. Lives in us. Lives in us. Lives in us. So it's a new month. And I thought it would be kind of nice to start a new thing for these videos. So I figured I would start sending birthday shout outs to people who've had their birthdays in the previous days or weeks. And so since we've missed almost two months of seeing each other in church, I'm going to start with March and April and do some shout outs to the people who have birthdays in March and April. Happy birthday to everybody who celebrated their month birthdays in the past month, two months. And I actually wrote everybody's name down that we've missed their birthdays for. So I'm going to sing, and you guys get to hear me sing. And here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Luke, Daniel, Lois, Carter, Owen, and Annika, Jaden, Ryan, Erica, Levi, Avery, and Aaliyah. Happy birthday to you. I hope you had a great day. And woo! <laughs> kids I'm gonna show you a few pictures of some things and I want you to think of why they are important and why we would need them so here is a picture of something that you probably have seen um, many times especially if you like to play with Lego so it is a piece of paper and it shows you how to put together this particular car or truck or whatever it is so this is called an instruction sheet for Lego. And here we see a great big piece of paper that you would find in a board game. And this one is called the game of life. And it's 
directions or instructions in how to play the game. And here we see a picture of bread on the top and it's maybe a little blurry, but um, and in the words right in the middle of the page, it says how to make bread and it tells you the ingredients and how to do it. So these are instructions or a recipe for how to make bread. And here, oh, some of you might get this in your house and you might, mom and dad might have that hung up somewhere on the wall or on a board and it's your daily chores. And every day they might have an activity that you have to do or a task um, that might be different each day and maybe you have something you have to do every day, but this is instructions on what you have to do for your chores. And here, now this is something that you might see, or you're, maybe you don't, because your parents give it to the babysitter, right? So let's say you're going away, and mom and dad leave this instructions to tell the babysitter where to call if there's an emergency, what to do if someone's sick, what time you go to bed, what food you like to eat, what snacks you're allowed, that sort of thing. What was common with all these pictures was that they were all instructions on how to do things. Now we know that instructions are important because they help us do things correctly or help us direct us to do things without getting lost or confused or doing the wrong thing. And so that's something I want you to remember for the story today. So the beginning of today's Bible story comes from the book, the Holy Bible, and it comes from Matthew 28. And uh, the very last part of Matthew 28 is called the Great Commission. So the story is based on that, and it goes a little bit further than Matthew 28. But I'm going to read from Matthew 28, verse 16, and then we'll go straight into the story. So it goes, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. The Bible tells us that Jesus has invited his disciples to meet him on a certain mountain. He has something very important to tell them just like when your parents have something important to tell you. All the disciples were there. Then Jesus came and spoke to them. He told them something important, and this is what he said. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There are three important ideas in what Jesus said to them. We'll read the verses again so you can think about what those three ideas are. So if you can read along, please follow, do that if you can. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. And you can find that in Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. So what are those three ideas? Hmm, maybe you can take a moment to think about it but I will also show you in the next slide. So one of the first things he said was, go and tell everyone about Jesus. The second thing he said was, baptize the people who believe. And the third thing he said was, I will always be with you. Does what Jesus said make it sound like he is going away? Hmm, in what way do you think it sounds like he might be going away? Well, let's find out. After Jesus' resurrection, Jesus met with the disciples several times, proving that he was alive. He had so much to tell them. For those 40 days, Jesus told them about the kingdom of God. One night at supper, he told them something important and very surprising. It wasn't a suggestion or a passing thought. It was a command. Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised you. I told you about it before. John baptized people with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
Oh my, I wonder what they thought about that. If you were there and Jesus commanded you to wait for a special gift or the Holy Spirit, what questions would go through your minds? When they met together again, the disciples had some questions too. So much had happened lately. Jesus' death, his resurrection, his appearances out of nowhere. And now Jesus promised this new and unusual gift. So they asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to set up your kingdom right here in Jerusalem? After all, they had always hoped that Jesus would be an earthly king. Jesus said, it's not for you to know when I will come to rule the earth, but you will receive very special power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses and tell everyone about me here in Jerusalem and throughout the whole world. After Jesus said that, he was taken up into the sky right in front of their eyes. A cloud covered him and there was that was the last time they saw Jesus on earth. I wonder if you were there and saw that happen, what thoughts would go rushing through your mind? The, two, the disciples were still straining their eyes to see Jesus when suddenly two men dressed in all white stood beside them. They spoke to the disciples, men of Galilee, why are you standing there? Why are you looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come again. He will come in the same way that you have seen him go. Imagine that you are a disciple. Think about everything you've seen and heard in the last few days. What is the most surprising thing that you will tell your family about when you get home? And how will you explain the wonder of it all? For today, you can actually go back and print the coloring sheet that I showed you last week. If you didn't do it the, um, last week, you can do it again this week because the Bible passage is the same and as we are doing this week. So I'll just quickly show you the picture. So this is the picture that I showed you last week. Um, it has the Bible passage on it that we are, the Bible story was about today. And if you scroll down, there's a two pictures actually, but this one, the first one was the NIV version, and then when this one is the NRSV version, so it's a little bit different wording, but they both say the same thing. So it depends on what Bible verse you liked um, better. So I did have a few people email me last week asking to be added to the dwell curriculum, and so they have been. I plunked them into the system and they have been sent an invite and now they have access to all these printables. So make sure if you want to have these printables that you send me the email that you want um, or that you use the most so that you can have access to all this stuff. So this is another activity that you can do today. There are six cards here and the suggestion is, is that you print it on cardstock and then you punch out the hole here and then you tie a ribbon in it and maybe you tie a balloon to it. And then you think of somebody who you think needs to hear about Jesus or know that he loves them and cares for them. So you write their name there and then you write um, underneath Jesus loves me every day, he blank, there's, there's two blanks there. So um, the kids are, kids are encouraged to fill in the blanks with a few words that describe one way Jesus cares for them each day. So maybe talk to your parents about some ideas that you can come up. How does Jesus care for you? Well, he gives you loving parents or he um, provides me with food every day or that sort of thing. And then um, you can write your name underneath there. So, and then you can put those in a brother and sister's room. Uh, maybe that's someone that needs to hear that Jesus loves them today or mom and dad or grandpa and grandma. Maybe you can go for a drive and deliver it to somebody that you know needs a pick me up or needs to know that you're, they need to be reminded that Jesus cares for them. So if you have access to the digital curriculum, if you would like to, you can continue to scroll down past um, the cards here and you will come to this sheet, I have to move, 
and it has a bunch of questions on it. Now in the curriculum handout sheet that I printed off here, it suggests that maybe you could play a game out of it, um, use buttons or coins as movers. So, but unfortunately it doesn't give a lot of explanation on how exactly you can play this game, but we're creative people and we can come up with many different ways to use this as a game board. And even if it's just for um, reference or reminders on, on what happened in the story and you can play against each other, just question each other and see who gets the most correct and that sort of thing. So um, yes, you can print that off or you can just keep it up and ask the questions and do whatever, but there's many different options that you can do there with this. And there actually is one more printed sheet, actually two, um, and they are the memory verse. They're sideways here, but my thinking is that you can cut these out and then paste them in proper order and it is the memory verse. So if you'd like to learn the memory verse in a creative fun way, you can make it kind of like a little puzzle. You can color the little things, cut them out, put them on colored paper, whatever. So there's many options here. And there's actually another one here, um, but this is the NRSV version. So. so let's take a minute right now to look back at the image that I showed you at the very beginning of today's lesson. And here it is, this picture of the feet on the cloud. So now we know what the picture was about. It was when Jesus ascended into heaven. So while you're looking at this, I want you to think back and share the things you remember or with yourself or your parents or just think about it, whatever. And remember the things that Jesus did in the 40 days between when he arose from the grave and when he ascended into heaven. Jesus said so many things to give us comfort. And um, one of the ways Jesus was always with his disciples is, and he is always with us today, and that is through his Holy Spirit. And next week, you'll be learning more about the Holy Spirit. So while you're looking at this symbol, I want you to take a minute just to think about the cool things that Jesus has done and the comfort he has given us. And then we'll end with a word of prayer. So why don't we take a moment now to pray? Dear Jesus, we praise you. You are Lord of both heaven and earth. We thank you. We feel safe knowing that you will always be with us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's it for today's lesson. And before we go, I would like to leave you with a few words. And that it's something that you should always remember. So I'll read them off for you. Wherever you go in God's wide world, whatever happens to you, whether it's good or bad, always remember that Jesus is Lord. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next week.